What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, I'm your host, and on this episode, I'm gonna treat all the loan officers watching with the answer to the most common questions I receive from you, and that is, Daniel, how do I create urgency? So, being a loan officer is a challenge because you rely a lot on your borrowers to do certain things, whether it's go pay for an appraisal, whether it's go dig up their tax returns, go get that pay stub, call their HR department to rush that VOE. There's a lot of things that we rely on that prospect to do for us. And this prospect may not have signed up for the rate that they wanted or may not have been getting the pricing that they wanted. So it's pretty easy for these borrowers to just, you know, just shut everything off and go and cancel everything. But we can't let that happen because our income is derived based on that, that whole loan processing being complete. And so I'm going to share some insight with you that's really going to be able to influence your prospect to act with more urgency. And this is going to be very helpful. I think that the urgency really needs to be set up at the time of your pitch, so at your sales presentation. But here's the problem, is that most pitching and most sales presentations happens at the very beginning of the sales call, like way before the 1003 is even given. And so I got a video for you. I'll leave a link before this uh, or below this video. It's gonna say 1003 Remastered and how to properly extract the most information out of, out of that first initial 1003 conversation, how to do it correctly, and break past the objections that you get at the very beginning of that call. So be sure you check that out. The sense of urgency really needs to be implemented at the time of pitching. And so I'm gonna give you an example how most pitches go. Most pitches go like this. So this is gonna be a common pitch. They're gonna say, a loan officer would say, hey Mr. Jones, this is what I got for you. I got option one, option two, and then option three. This is very common. Most loan officers do this. And so they say, Mr. Jones, I, I, you know, I, got, I got the numbers ready for you. I'm gonna cover a few options for you. Grab a pen and paper. Here we go. Option one. And the reason why I don't like to do this is because number one, you're putting yourself as an option. You're reiterating the point that you are just an option. You, you are one of many different options. And, and why I don't like to give them two or three is it's too many things to think about. <laughs> but you know, I, I saw this one sales video or sales training video. The guy gave him 18 options. Even everybody was commenting like 18. Like, damn, that's a lot of thinking to do, right? You don't want to confuse these people. They're already confused as they are. You being a consultant, not a salesman, you should already have the answer for them. But I'm going to go ahead and give you over the common spew or the common pitch. And if you're currently doing it like this, don't get, don't trip, don't get mad. Now you know a better way. But here's the common pitch is that I got option one and that's 4%. Monthly payment of 2000 Lender credit of, let's say, 3000 and we dig into that because we know that they want a free loan, right? Like we're talking to Mr. Patel and Mr. Patel's super rate sensitive or we're talking to Mr. Jones and he did, will not pay for a loan. He said it right from the very beginning. Hey, Daniel, I don't want to pay nothing in costs. I got a 910 FICO score. I don't need to pay costs. As a matter of fact, I don't even need this loan. I could pay this house off tomorrow if I wanted to. You know who I'm talking about. So why I think this is ineffective is because if Mr. Jones or Mr. Patel, whoever we were pitching, here right here at this time if we say hey I got option number one your option number one is four percent you've I've already lost the attention of mr. Jones they, mr. Jones cares nothing about anything that I say after that four percent mind you mr. Jones heard option so the only thing that mr. Jones is now hit is now thinking in his head is okay what's option two and three I don't like this rate and so why this is not effective is because now you're going over option two and typically option two, let's say 4.25 payment of let's say 2100, LC will give him even higher, right? So we'll even cover his escrow deposit. And now we get to, hey, Mr. Jones, you get to keep your escrow balance. You know, we'll cover your property tax and insurance. I'm, I'm going to take care of you, Mr. Jones. But the problem is that, again, he, he, the very first thing you heard was the interest rate. My, he didn't give a fuck about the 4,500. He just doesn't like the rate. He didn't even like it at 4%. And then finally we go to three, right? Let's say uh, option number three, I got a 3.875 
monthly payment, let's say 1900, no LC, right? So we'll put zero. So now Mr. Jones has to cover all his closing costs, but he gets a 3.875. The problem with doing it this way, and you could do 3.875 option number one and kind of work it down that way regardless. However, I think that saying option and then the interest rate is the wrong way of going about it. Now here's the, the better way to do it pitched, okay? So I'm gonna show you the remastered pitch. Now there's a few things that, to keep in mind when you're doing a remastered pitch. Number one is your borrower is going to receive not only an, an escrow refund of their current escrow balance now, but they're going to also get a payment deferral, right? And so, you know, I want to give you an example. I had a borrower who I did a refinance for. It was just a rate and term refinance, no cash to them, but I knew that through my escrow balance and through my payment deferral, I was going to leave that borrower with about $6,000 available cash flow. Just the way it worked out, you know, had a pretty big uh, escrow balance inside their bank account. And most prospects, they don't know about that. Most borrowers, they don't understand, or at least they forget that they get an escrow balance refund and then they'll also skip a payment. And if you're paying off debt, then you can skip a payment on all the other debt we're paying off too, so because there's no payment on those debts for one month, right? And so don't, don't let that slip through the cracks. Really use that for your benefit. In this example, I was able to free up $6,000 on the refinance in itself. I was only able to save them like $50 payment to payment. This is very, you know, it was a streamlined refinance and, and I needed enough lender credit to cover not only the closing costs, but I was able to get enough juice uh, to cover also the, the prepaids as well. And so with regards to the um, surge of cash flow with that 6,000, they're able to pay off three credit cards that I was able to dig in and I found out that they're paying $600 on. It was three credit cards, about $2,000 each, the credit report said $25 is a minimum payment, but I don't, I don't accept that. I remind them and say, hey, you know, Mr. Jones, you got this $2,000 chase card. How much you send per month on that? Oh, the wife sends it? Hey, Mrs. Jones, how much do you send? You send $200 on that? Okay, cool. What about this US bank credit card? It's about 2002, how much do you send on it? Oh, I send $200 on that? Oh, okay, 200 on the other one? Because if you go with the credit card or is the credit report uh, monthly payment, they're just pointing out the minimum payment. But we don't know if Mr. Jones is really trying to pay it off faster. And so now I've discovered that they're paying $600. So now my, my payment savings went from $50 to $650 per month because I was just, I was, I was really digging deep and trying to find out how am I going to sell this person on a $50 savings? Who cares if he skips a payment or whatnot? You know, how do I sell somebody on that? And they're really, really grinding me on the monthly savings. Like, oh, I got to save a lot. I got to save a lot. And so I could have looked at it and said, oh man, I'm only going to save 50 bucks, but I got creative. I used the payment deferral and also the escrow refund and created more savings. So really think about that. But a way to do this is, um, you know, when you find out, you know, let's say they're getting a payment deferral of 3,000 and the escrow refund of 2,000. So right here, I already got $5,000. This is available cash flow from a payment deferral and an escrow refund. This is something I'm gonna keep in my back pocket. But when I do a remastered uh, pitch, what I start off is I never even say they have option one, option two, option number three. Every pitch that I, that I start, I, you know, whether it's set at four o'clock or five o'clock, I'll always give them a call and I'll start the pitch off like this. I'll say, hey, Mr. Jones, I was putting the information together for our appointment. And as I was putting it together, I found something. I want to run it by you first before I release it out, before I send it out to you in writing. You got a minute? Okay, cool. So here's what I'm thinking. And the reason why I open it up that way is because I know they're on guard. I know they're on guard because that call is going to be based on a pitch. It's going to be based on looking at the numbers. And I understand that the likelihood of Mr. and Mrs. Jones talking to each other before going in saying, hey, don't say yes, don't say yes, whatever you do, don't commit. And so that might be, you know, that might be the case. So when going in, I like to put them off guard, much like the sales script. If you haven't gotten a copy, download a copy of that sales script. It's at salesremaster.com. But when I, when, you know, that sales script, it really dismantles their guard. Same thing happens on the pitch call. And so open up your pitch that way and then go into the pitch. This is the pitch that I do is I'll always open up the conversation as, um, hey, you know what, Mr. Jones, I had a quick question for you. I wanted to run something by you and just confirm a few things before I released it to you. This is really going to help you achieve 
A, B, and C. This is the goals that we extracted from the very first conversation. Again, if you need any help on completing the 1003 application and do it correctly, look at the video link. I'll leave it in the notes under this video, but definitely check that out. And when you get up to the pitch, and you're going over the options, you don't say this is an option. Just say, hey, I had an idea, I wanna run it by you. Now you'd mentioned to me it was important for you to achieve A, B, and C because that would enable both you and Mrs. Judy to do you know, X, Y, and Z. And this is the results of their benefit, the results of our, of our exchange, right? So me doing this refinance, it'll create the result that they needed. So if Mr. Jones wanted to, let's say, free up some cash flow so he can afford to go on vacation and take Mrs. Jones out on vacation more, then that's their thing. Whatever the goals is, this is what you want to uncover. And the reason why you're doing it this way, and that's how you start your pitch, is because you want to reframe their mindset, put them back into that mentality, confirm any any numbers that that you know that you have and that you're about to present to them, but get them back into that mind zone, get them back into that emotional state and say, you know, because you had mentioned that that was important to you, I have an idea. I, I saw that you had a credit card debt on your credit report and I wanted to ask you a few quick questions. There's this chase card and the reason why I'm gonna ask them that is because I know I have $5,000 freed up for them automatically from both the payment deferral and also the escrow refund. So now I got 5,000, but I'm not gonna tell them this right away. I'm going to map it out for them and create a plan for them. People like when it's already handled. And so it's easier to accept if it's already a proven path, if it makes sense and it's logical. And so if I knew that I was creating $5,000, I would try and find out how, how would Mr. Jones and Mrs. Jones really like to use this 5,000. Starting from the sales conversation, I knew that they're looking for monthly savings. And so on the credit report, I saw, let's say, two credit card debts, and each one's about $2,000, and say, you know, I got this Chase card, Mr. Jones, how much are you sending per month on that? And let's say they send $200 on a $2,000 credit card. Then I'll make mental note of that. And then, I, you know, you got this other credit card with US Bank, how much are you sending that one? Oh, I sent another 200. So now I got $400 in monthly savings right then and there already planned out to assist me with the monthly savings. Because I know that if they didn't refinance, they wouldn't get the payment deferral, nor they would they get the escrow refund. But since they are, this is just another bonus. And this is never being used on sales pitches, at least from what I hear, or at least just amount up the pitch. And what you're doing is you're building the anticipation, you're building the excitement, and, and things are now starting to make sense. And say, well, Mr. Jones, the reason why I'm asking is because you have $2,000 in your escrow balance. When we pay off your loan, that actually gets refunded to you. It gets refunded to you in about 30 to 45 days. Plus, you're also going to skip a payment. And so if I knew that their mortgage payment was 3000 and I know they pay 400 technically that's $5,400 in total, total monthly expenditures that is being deferred plus the escrow refund, right? And I know that those two credit cards that they sent $400 on, total balance is only 4000 So now I'm leaving them with a little bit of cushion so they can put it in the bank in which they don't really have too much in the bank. He mentioned that because I asked the right questions in the beginning of the conversation. And so I'll say, Mr. Jones, I know you had mentioned that was important, so I thought about this and I want to run it by you. With the payment deferral and the escrow refund, I can actually remove that credit card debt, help you improve your FICO and create $400 of monthly savings. Not only that, but, but keep about $1,500 left over so you can put in the bank. The best part about it is I'm able to take your, your total monthly payment. If I added this, the mortgage payment plus the credit card debts, you're at $3,400 right now. I'm gonna be able to show, that, show you how to bring that down to $2,900. Mind you, I'm only saving them $100 on the mortgage payment. But now that I've created or I've added in these figures, the $400 credit card debt, now I'm creating $500 a monthly payment. Get it? So I'm able to save you $500 a monthly payment and there's gonna be no cost on this option. Why I think this is important is because I want to show you how to really protect your equity. Sounds like you and Mr. and Mrs. Jones are, are in the process of creating a better financial plan, and I praise you for that. You'll, you'd be amazed how many people out there just do not care about the things that you brought up. And so I could see that you, you guys really do want a, a beneficial plan, and, and I think I'm able to help create this for you. So if you look at the monthly payment and the monthly savings, this is a $500 payment difference, giving you $500 in extra extra cash flow per month that you could ultimately be putting towards your retirement or you could be putting it towards your current monthly savings account. Now I wanted to get your feedback on that because you had mentioned it was important to do A, B, and C so that you can X, Y, and Z. 
And again, you hit them right back with that mindset and just ask them, say, what you, what's your thoughts on that? And that's how you ask for the sale. If you've done it right, Mr. Jones is gonna say, oh yeah, that sounds great. And then your response should be, you know what, I thought you'd say that. I'm gonna go ahead and send this out to you in the mail, but before I can even begin an offer, I gotta make sure that you're even approved to move forward. So there's gonna be a few things that I need from you. I'm gonna send you a quick email. It's gonna have just a few items that I'm gonna need back, and that's gonna enable me to confirm that there's a bridge for you to cross. If I do confirm that you can cross, then we can start the process, and it'll be over in about 30 to 45 days. Throughout the process though, I asked please refrain from pulling your credit, refrain from applying for any loans, and ensure that anything that we ask upon you, please be prompt in making sure that you get that back in a timely manner because we want to get it done in about 30 to 45 days. Once this loan funds, there will be no payment on this month. Your first payment is here and this would be your total monthly payment. So I'm going to go ahead and send that email out to you and then release it over in disclosures. And what time can I get those items tomorrow? Got it. Okay, cool. I'm going to go and set that up. You're going to hear from my loan assistant. She's going to give you a call just to follow up and make sure that we have everything buttoned up, that I can validate it by tomorrow before the market closes or before the market changes. And once I get that confirmation, I'll reach out to you to confirm that we can have an appraiser come out to your house. Okay, so now you understand why that creates somewhat a sense of urgency right from the very beginning is because I never said that the loan was locked. I never said that they were approved. Where most locks kind of go south is because the prospect believes that they're locked. They haven't even given you any documents yet. You don't even truly know if they're approved to cross that bridge. But when you end the pitch in that manner, saying that, oh, in order for me to even to confirm that we can even proceed, I got to make sure that you're approved to cross. I got to make sure that you have a bridge across or that you, you're approved to even move forward. So I'm going to send you out a list of documents. Once I confirm that you are able to move forward, I'll validate the approval and we'll start the process. So now they understand that there is items needed and it's going to be based on their documents in order for me to validate their ability to proceed. Now here's the thing is that when you get them emotionally attached to the savings like I had mentioned to you on the board and you give them an, a, a plan on what to do in order to improve their their way of living, the current budget, and you create these positive impacts, the truth is, is that the prospects are already spent it up. They say, okay, well, I get $500, this will let me do A, B, and C. So it's, it's this instinct reaction that they have that creates that emotional bond to, to your product or your service. And when you use that wording, to end your pitch, you create this momentum, this sense of urgency along with it. Like, hey, you know what, before I can even begin the process, I gotta validate that you have the ability to proceed. I gotta make sure we got a bridge across. I, I say things like that in order to really confirm to the person or the prospect that, that they don't have it yet. So I talked about this nice positive impact to their budget and taking off a lot of their stress and ending a lot of their worries and, and really putting a solution down to, the, to what's probably creating a lot of arguments within a household. And I, and I put out a plan, a straight roadmap of how to get to where they want to be. And then I stopped it. I said, hey, well, but wait, it sounds great and all, but I gotta make sure you can even cross to get there. So get me over these documents first. Once I get them, I'll confirm it, validate your ability to proceed, and we'll begin the process. So now they understand that they are the ones who hold the key, and then they'll react that much faster, understanding that they have to do something in order to get that vision that I painted for them through the pitch. So try it out. I'm interested to in see what your feedback is and I got a question for you. Which one are you using? You know, are you on the option pitch or are you doing it more in line of kind of like the remastered pitch that I had shared with you? Do you see value in it? Do you think it would work? I'd really love your input so please leave your comments below. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing and please like, comment, and share. Share on your Facebook, share on your LinkedIn, share on any social media channel that you have to help me support my brand awareness. And I appreciate your time. I'll see you in the next video.